и нас будет видно на YouTube. Так, всем добрый день. Everybody, hello. We have 24 participants at the moment, and I hope people will join us in several minutes. Uh, so today is uh, the webinar of Dinara Casco, and maybe it's uh, the tastiest webinar in our course and very beautiful. Uh, so uh, I give the stage to Dinara and uh, now you are the leading one. Okay, so hello guys. Всем привет. Uh, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> I think I didn't use English last year because I stopped traveling. So I'm sorry in advance <laughs> if I forget something, <laughs> please. Uh, and uh, I really um, have to say I'm uh, I'm very happy to explain my uh, concept a bit today uh, for you. And uh, I'm sure you uh, you know something about pastry, but not a lot. So I would like just to share my passion and uh, to explain what I am doing and to explain what we have in general inside right now in the pastry world, in the culinary world. Because uh, when I started baking and uh, at, uh, when I started to attend different classes and travel and uh, meet different pastry chefs and uh, just um, understand this pastry world, I was really um, uh, surprised because I didn't know that we have such big, I don't know, pastry world in general. So we have a lot of pastry chef and it's really uh, art. And I would like to share uh, just my passion and uh, all that I know right now about pastry and about restaurants. And I hope for you it will be interesting because uh, really in Ukraine, people don't know about this and uh, it just, but it's a big, uh, it's a very big part of uh, our culinary world and um, food in general. So, uh, can I start? Yes? Okay. Uh, so, my name is Dinara Kasko. Maybe you know, maybe someone uh, saw my uh, videos uh, somewhere. Uh, and uh, I, I'm an architect. I studied uh, architecture, but then I started baking. I don't know, it just happened. Uh, and uh, now I'm a pastry chef, I'm a confectioner, so I'm uh, baking. And uh, I would like to uh, explain at the beginning a bit information just about me. So um, when I was 15, I decided to be a designer and uh, it was my dream. And uh, I went to art school, but before I was a dancer, so I wanted to be a dancer, but then I decided, okay, I want to be a designer. And uh, I graduated from the university, Kharkiv University, uh, Architectural University. But uh, when I studied, I also worked. Uh, I started working uh, when I was at the second uh, course. And uh, I work in uh, um, some uh, architect uh, company. Uh, then I also, I used to be photographer. During three years, I made different uh, photos and pictures, many weddings, uh, modeling, shooting. And uh, then finally, when I, uh, when I uh, finished my uh, university, uh, when I graduated, uh, I... Uh, uh, found some job. Uh, I was 3D artist and uh, I just made the renders for uh, some Holland company and uh, you can see for example I just uh, uh, this is a picture of luxury villa luxury villa and uh, right now it's not very good render if we compare but uh, we made such renders six seven eight years ago and um, for that time it was uh, very nice and i had a really good job i liked my job uh, but uh, but suddenly i started baking <laughs> i uh, with, uh, we moved with my husband to our apartment and uh, uh, i had uh, i have very nice kitchen very small but finally i got it because before I lived in a student's hostel and uh, I didn't have a fridge or oven stove. I didn't, I uh, tell very often that during five years, uh, I didn't buy any sugar, never. 
or flour, never. I didn't bake, I didn't do any sweets. I helped my mother a lot, uh, a bit, and uh, I like uh, eating sweets. Really, I like cakes, and uh, uh, that's why when I when we moved here, I started baking and cooking. Of course, at the beginning, I also cooked some normal food, not only cakes. Uh, and then uh, I baked, baked, I attended different classes with many famous pastry chefs. Uh, at that time, it was in 2013, I think, uh, many different chefs uh, started to come to Ukraine, but it was very difficult to, um, to attend their classes because uh, every time all uh, places were totally like booked, fully booked. And uh, now we have many chefs and it's, you can join online classes, you can go offline classes, you can, I don't know, there are a lot, but uh, seven years ago, it was really good luck to find uh, any empty space to join some class. So I started, uh, I found some friends and I started to attend these classes. And I remember when I went to first class, I was totally shocked and surprised because these cakes, they were, uh, amazing for me, very shiny, bright, colorful, and it was totally different. Uh, if we, uh, for example, before I, I knew only honey cake or Napoleon or I don't know, Kiev cake, uh, but then I saw this and I understood how, how to make it. So when I uh, came home, I uh, started baking a lot uh, after work. Uh, almost every day. So I finished my job at six, for example, and then I went to kitchen and just bake something. Uh, and uh, after, so next slide. Where is, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so after I, I baked and baked and uh, in 2015, uh, I, my uh, daughter was born and I just uh, stopped uh, working with my render company and I started, I uh, discovered Instagram and Instagram, it's very important for me. It's like all for me, I can say this. And uh, I started just posting pictures on the Instagram uh, and people were very interested in it and I uh, noticed that uh, um, some beautiful pictures and interesting objects on this picture, they took uh, much more attention, they got more likes, uh, I don't know, uh, they uh, gave me followers more and more. And I started to do something interesting for me and for followers and uh, just, uh, I tried to do some interesting cakes. And, uh, and at the same time, it was difficult because uh, six, seven years ago, we didn't have any special molds for cakes we had something very simple and here on this picture i have um, it's an object it's a cake uh, this is cake uh, inside this uh, box and box uh, was made from sugar so this is sugar box red chocolate and cake inside and uh, i started to make some composition some interesting uh, geometry molds and uh, uh, and finally, I'm here. So little by little. Uh, social network. I would like to show my uh, geometry collection. This is one of my favorite collection and uh, how it happened. So in 2015, uh, I realized that I want to make some special molds for cakes. And I didn't know how to do it. I knew something about 3D printers, but I knew only like 3D printer. It, it's, it's some machine and we can find it somewhere, by, but not, not more. So I uh, found some uh, people here in Kharkov city uh, from also from my university and they, um, they had garage. I think, you know, it's garage hub, but now they have hub, they have very big space, but before it was really small garage and we went there and there was, uh, some guy Dima, he helped me with, uh, printing. Uh, he made, uh, like handmade 3d printer and he printed, uh, uh, first, uh, these first molds uh, he printed for me. So I sent him uh, uh, drawings, 3D models, and uh, he sent me, uh, he printed for me. And uh, uh, I started to make these uh, molds because they were very attractive. And uh, 
it just uh, it was very interesting but when i posted these pictures especially this uh, gray one they didn't uh, got uh, they didn't get a lot of likes or comments so they were not very popular because they were very simple and maybe not very attractive for people on the instagram but uh, i was very happy because uh, for me it was very important because i liked them and it was for me like uh, the most important part because i really liked uh, all that i uh, prepared and uh, after when i started to post another pictures and when i became a bit more popular uh, finally people understood that uh, it's not uh, just a simple object uh, so uh, as i told this social network was uh, quite important for me and in uh, 2015 uh, I received some uh, email from So Good magazine. It's a very uh, famous magazine in the pastry world. It's one of it's the best pastry magazine in the pastry world uh, in English. It's like really a big, huge book. Uh, and uh, it's just a small story about this uh, magazine. Uh, I was in uh, some pastry class in 2015 and uh, Tatiana, the uh, director of this uh, pastry school, it's located in Kyiv, uh, she told me that you have to write to this magazine and you have to show uh, your uh, cakes, your pictures. And I said, no, can you like imagine me and this book together? It's something unusual, unreal because uh, uh, I saw this uh, magazine for the first time and I there were a lot of uh, like the best pastry chef in the world, the really champions, like best of the best, really. I, 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 can't, I couldn't imagine me uh, and them together in one book. Uh, but she told me, no, you have to write, you have to write, you have to write. I said, okay. And I wrote. I wrote five times, but every time my email went to like spam, so they didn't get uh, my emails. And after two months, I uh, forgot about this. And after they wrote me, and they proposed me to make article how to combine architecture and uh, pastry, like how to combine design and pastry. Uh, I was shocked. I was scared, and uh, I'm really I that for that uh, at that time I was just a housewife I had some small kitchen and I I didn't know how to do it but I understood that I have to do it I don't know somehow especially because there were no any Ukrainian uh, people in this uh, shop uh, except this Tatiana uh, director of the school but it was article about the school so for me it was a big honor to be there belong these chefs so we prepared five different cakes we prepared big articles i worked a lot i didn't sleep well and i had small daughter at the time she was like one and a half year it was difficult but we prepared and then they told me that they want to make uh, they want to use my cake on the cover and uh, i think at that time uh, it was like I, I can't believe i couldn't believe totally it's like uh, you can imagine if you are some model and uh, you are you have the cover of the walk magazine but you just started and you have this cover so for me it was big surprise and after in uh, 2016 i started to post pictures from this magazine and i started to get followers and uh, for example at the beginning of the year i had uh, maybe 30 follow 30000 followers and in September, I had 300,000 followers. So ooh, I get a lot of emails, interviews. We had all uh, Ukrainian TV channel here at home. Uh, I don't know. I had three, two, three, five interviews per day. Uh, I didn't expect it. And I was really scared. And uh, I just, I was a housewife. <laughs> and it was very, very strange for me but uh, i'm uh, i like to work so i didn't stop and i start traveling uh, i start uh, to make classes and uh, i had uh, a lot of invitations all over the world uh, uh, everything started uh, there is a picture a yellow picture uh, it was some competition we won competition but before all uh, i won competition with my friend and i went to paris it was my first trip 
I bought some special equipment, I tasted these cakes, and then after two years, I started my own classes. Little by little, uh, uh, I started to, uh, in Ukraine, then Russia, then I moved to Thailand, then China, Europe, uh, USA, like everywhere. I, uh, I, I was in uh, many different countries. Uh, then I also had some TED talk in Germany about pastry. And uh, I, uh, we had, we made presentation with Ruby chocolate in Germany. Uh, so really, you know, it's like, um, uh, I, I tell about this because I would like to show that uh, during uh, a few years, like uh, how to explain. So I was a housewife. I baked it uh, in the kitchen at home. And after three years, four years, uh, I was at the stage of that. And uh, just to show that everything is possible, really, uh, like if someone uh, told me about this before, I, uh, I told that it's impossible, but really it's possible, guys. So little by little, uh, I, I worked more and more. And uh, now next uh, stage, uh, so I, I, uh, I told about me, and now I would like to tell what we have right now in uh, pastry. So as you know, Instagram and social networks like Facebook and all other social networks are very important right now. And many people, uh, they post uh, a lot of pictures of their, I don't know, lunch, dinner and uh, all their food. And uh, I know that there are a lot of designers and we work with restaurants and with foods and with everything. And now it's very important when you do some projects for a restaurant and cafe you have to think about some space some place where you have very good lighting when you uh, where you can make beautiful picture of your food because it's your advertising because when people can do beautiful picture of the food it means that if they post it uh, more and more customers will come to to see and to try and now, uh, you know, there are some special spots in cafe, uh, like Insta spots, when you can uh, come and make these uh, pictures. And uh, this is picture from my uh, cafe in uh, USA. It's not my own cafe. There was an investor. He saw my TED talk and he wrote me and he wanted to make a beautiful cafe with the best uh, tea, coffee and cakes. And they made it and uh, we had... Uh, display we had cakes they have uh, different coffee and tea and they are very popular uh, the cafe is located in boston in city center near louis vuitton and uh, all some luxury shops uh, and for me of course it was very big honor to do this uh, and the cafe is very um, successful so they have um, they sell everything at uh, 12 they are okay I forgot this world. So they they sell all cakes and they, uh, I just, I forgot, <laughs> sorry. So there are no uh, cakes at display at 12 almost every day. I'm not sure about now because it's quarantine, it's a strange situation with restaurants, uh, but uh, it was before. So uh, I would like you also to show some uh, pastry uh, chefs and some works uh, to show you that food can be an art. And uh, uh, after, if you want, you can see uh, their uh, Insta, uh, Insta pages uh, more. But uh, it's, for example, I start with Melissa Kupel. Uh, she's a friend of mine. And uh, I was in her uh, Las Vegas Academy. For me, she was very important, uh, her uh, bonbons, because I saw her pictures and I uh, fall in love. And for me, it was a uh, uh, big reference how to make good pictures uh, with black background. And uh, it just, for me, it was a very important person with very good style. Then uh, this is Francisca Migoya. And I, I think I'm sure you have to follow him because he makes very unusual things and uh, he's really very creative, extremely creative. He has very beautiful um, uh, Insta account and uh, he, he's, I don't know, extremely smart and uh, I'm a big fan of him. 
and I hope one day I can meet him. Then Cedric Gralet, it's um, uh, he is uh, one of uh, like the best pastry chef in 2018, I think. Uh, and uh, maybe you uh, saw his fruits. Uh, he's very popular with fruits. Uh, he made fruit collection and all other cakes. And they had a few uh, restaurants like uh, and cafes, uh, pastry shops in Paris. And he has more than one million followers. But we have much more popular guy, uh, Amri Gushon. He has two million six hundred thousand followers uh, on the Instagram, and it's really the god of the pastry uh, Instagram. Uh, he makes very beautiful videos, and uh, he has really very very nice uh, nice cakes. Then Frank Hasnut, uh, also one of the icon uh, with very stylish Instagram page. Uh, Ramon Morata, uh, Miguel Guara, uh, extremely creative uh, guy. Uh, Jordi Bordas, I will uh, tell about him a bit later. Uh, uh, Francois, uh, I don't know how to pronounce, Francois Perret, he also one of the uh, best pastry chef in the world and he uh, creates very interesting things but ex with extremely tasty uh, fluffy tender and nice textures i tasted his uh, cakes uh, this february i uh, met him and the price for one cake is 35 euro can you imagine <laughs> 35 euro for one small cake it's like just uh just a cake uh, then I uh, now you know it's very popular to make mono products. So when you, uh, for example, when you open something and you have only eclairs or only tarts or only I don't know sushi, only something. So Christoph Adam, uh, he's the most uh, I think uh, popular person. He makes uh, he's very popular with eclairs, and uh, they opened um, many different boutiques all over the world. And uh, the name of this. Uh, boutique it's Eclair de Genie it's like genius Eclairs so he told that uh, like it's the best uh, Eclairs in the world uh, and then next so I just I showed you some interesting account it's interesting pages if you are interested in it you can see uh, just uh, they were one of the best uh, chefs also of course we have some uh, not only chefs but we have very uh, popular uh, shops and they did a lot for uh, pastry world in general so for example la durie Pierre Hermé, uh, Jean-Paul Evan, and all other uh, chefs. But I think La Durie and Pierre Hermé is one of the uh, most uh, popular. And uh, they made, uh, they, uh, how to say, they changed the pastry world. And they gave uh, all these chefs because, for example, Pierre Hermé, he has a lot of books and I have three of them. So many, many chefs, they, they studied, uh, they understood, uh, they uh, saw, they bought. And uh, they uh, really, I don't know how to влиять. В общем, они повлияли <laughs> очень сильно. Он повлиял вообще на становление кондитерского мира. Influence. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's just, it's like, you know, gods of pastry uh, mass production world. Uh, then I would like you to show, uh, it's one of my favorite uh, two pages, it's Russian speaking guys, they have uh, this one, uh, they from Moscow, and they make really very nice cakes, so I think you have to check their account. Uh, they have many collaborations with many designers and maybe even if you know if you have some I don't know some projects you can do something with them they are very open and they are very uh, they do really contemporary design some modern design then one more uh, girl uh, she's uh, also from Russia and she makes uh, she's she's crazy really crazy and she makes uh, sculptures uh, it's like cake sculpture. All of this is handmade, so they do with hands. She's like a sculpture, but she used chocolate instead of, I don't know, of concrete or something else. And she has amazing projects, and I'm a big fan of her. 
And uh, next, uh, so of course we have much more chefs and I follow a lot of different pastry chefs, but I can't uh, talk only about them. And uh, next, uh, uh, next point, I would like you to tell that uh, pastry right now, in Ukraine people, they don't know it, but pastry, it's a very popular uh, world and there are a lot of competitions, a lot of people, a lot of pastry chef. In Ukraine, we don't have it. We don't know it. We have some small competition, very bad level, but because we do not have this in our culture, so it's not traditional for us. Uh, we do not uh, eat, uh, I don't know, cakes and croissants for breakfast like uh, in uh, France or Italy. Uh, but for, uh, for example, in France, it's, uh, I think it's pastry country. And uh, for them, it's uh, really, it's their uh, religion, this uh, pastry. And they have a lot of competition. You can see is it, uh, this is uh, World Pastry Cup, Coupe du Monde. And you can see there are so many people uh, and people come from all over the world to uh, to see this competition. Uh, usually there are 25 or something like these teams. Uh, there are many uh, competitions before this main competition. And uh, this year, Ukraine, Ukraine also joined this uh, for the first time. It was uh, first competition in Ukraine. Uh, also, uh, guys were in France, but unfortunately they... Um, they didn't want so they can't uh, they will just uh, how to say uh, в общем они заняли четвертое место и дальше их не пропустили будут пробовать потом so next year uh, this competition uh, uh, they have it every two years so next time we will uh, try one more time and uh, also it's not only competition i was there it's uh, in lyon uh, in france and uh, it's really a huge exhibition it's i don't know is for me it's the biggest uh, the biggest exhibition i've ever seen uh, during three days uh, we went to different uh, stands and it took three days to visit all of them so it's a huge space really very big space. I was shocked when I came uh, there first time. You can meet uh, there all famous pastry chef, like all of them. Uh, also, you can join different competition and you can see here that also they have competition with bread. So how to make uh, bread, how to make dough, how to make ice culture. So they compete how to make uh, cheese, how to make everything, even sausages. <laughs> they have competition for all food. And it's very, it's very, really very nice. And they have these um, winners. And when you go, in, for example, in France, you can go and uh, find like winners, the best sandwiches, the best uh, bread, the best meat, the best milk, cheese. And uh, they're really crazy about this. Uh, also, it's like one, um, one interesting, um, very interesting part, it's a sugar, sugar sculpture. I wanted to join this class with uh, one of the best uh, sugar chef, uh, Stefan Klein. Unfortunately, I couldn't, but uh, I will do this later. And uh, you can see the sculpture with, uh, from sugar. So they use sugar and it's extremely difficult to make it because your fingers, it's so hot it's more than 100 degrees. So after you make it, it's, I don't know how to even explain. В общем, слезает кожа с пальцев полностью. Это очень тяжело поначалу. But it's very interesting. And it's just, I, I want uh, to show you, you know, from design, uh, from uh, design, uh, way, uh, how to say, uh, I want to show that, they also can do sculptures. So pastry chef, but they do sculptures like designers. But usually they have some designers who help them to create design and then they do everything from glass and it's very difficult to make it. For example, to make one this sculpture, it takes maybe five, seven days every day from morning till evening. And sugar, a very uh, I don't know, like uh, it's very easy to break. Fragile. Uh, fragile. Fragile, yes. It's extremely fragile, so it's, it's difficult to work with this. 
and you can see the size of this culture. So they are very big and for a big competition, they use also, uh, you can see here, uh, for example, uh, they do some uh, sculpture using sugar, chocolate, uh, they put some cakes also. So it's really a big job. Uh, there are also competition, of course, they do cakes, some designs. Uh, it's a boucher, so roulette, uh, torte. Uh, they also do ice cream. And uh, uh, this is uh, from World Chocolate Master, these uh, compositions. So they do different composi compositions from chocolate. Uh, also these compositions. And uh, it was a topic, I think, two years ago. Uh, it, it was, the topic was uh, city, like future city. I don't remember, like Futuropolis, Futuropolis. So uh, they were also participants from all over the world and they competed in uh, France, of course, in France. And they made these sculptures. So, you know, to be a pastry chef, you also need to be a bit designer <laughs> always. Uh, also, next uh, next uh, information, just uh, uh, 3D Food Restaurant Food Inc. Maybe you, uh, you know about this. Uh, uh, there is some restaurant in uh, London. They work with 3D printed food. Uh, but many people, you know, I work with 3D printer and uh, after I, uh, I will talk about this. But many people, when they think about 3D printing food, they think that you print everything. But it's impossible to print everything. Usually, you print just parts and how it works. So uh, let's say you have some puree. You can do puree from not only from potato, but from any vegetables. And then you just put this puree to some special tool to this uh, food printer. And, uh, and just it prints with this puree. But of course, it takes a lot of time. And after 30 minutes, your puree will be cold and maybe not very tasty. But it's very interesting for people. Also, you can print with chocolate and with all the ingredients. But even in this restaurant, you see that it's impossible to print all. You still have to cook meat. You have to cook, cook something before you put it uh, to 3D printers. But they are also interesting because they use 3D printed uh, furniture and something else so they uh, they made a lot of 3d printed uh, tools there uh, and then uh, i would like to tell about me and uh, about what i'm to uh, what i'm uh, doing in general so um, uh, 3D printer and how I started to work. As I told you before, uh, I started to print my own uh, 3D models. Uh, I found this guy and they helped me. But after some time, I found some other company. But then I realized that I need my own 3D printer because it's, uh, it's quite expensive to order every time and it's difficult to produce something. So I bought my own 3D printer and I was very happy and for me right now it's like tradition every new year I buy for me some new printer and now I have three 3D printers different size different uh, brand uh, but I work with this and uh, I'm not sure maybe I had this picture no so uh, I had the 3D printer Ultimaker and um, if I found right now I can show you Ultimaker, I can't, just a second. Uh, so I print uh, always uh, with uh, plastic. Yes, I found uh, the video. So I print with plastic and then we make silicone, we cast silicone mold because many people, they think that I print uh, cakes, uh, but no, it's impossible to print cake. So for example, here I show how to make um, cherry cake uh, we made the model and then we have to print this model uh, when we have printed model uh, we we can send it if needed uh, and then we make silicone you see uh, there is silicone mold and inside you can put anything you want so even soup or puree i don't know dough and you have to freeze it after you freeze you unmold and you cover it with glaze so uh, the story is very uh, simple. 
but uh, of course we have uh, many different things to do before it before we have this uh, beautiful picture so i work with uh, different software i work with uh, 3d 3ds max uh, and now I also have two guys who help me with modeling. Uh, they work with uh, Houdini, Grasshopper, uh, with uh, what else? With some other uh, some other softwares. Uh, but also we have Cura. So Cura it's software for three D printer. And uh, uh, so when you make your three D model, you have to open it with Cura. And Cura uh, makes some special way how to print. And it's very important if you want to print, for example, something, it's very important to do very good uh, model, very good, like without, you know, uh, crossing. So it needs to be perfect because uh, printer will not understand how to print and you will have a lot of uh, mistakes and a lot of strange, uh, you know, strange wrong uh, spaces. Uh, so you have to make good model. Uh, and uh, Ultimaker, so why I have also this size of the cake, usually people, they very often ask me, uh, because my uh, um, building plate, it calls building plate, it's only 20 by 20 centimeters, so I can't print more. If I want to print more, usually I have to, um, I have to suck it with glue, so I, I have to use glue. Um, because I bought also some bigger printer, but I can't work with it. Uh, it's not uh, it's not good enough. So I have also many different pictures, and uh, I would like you to show. Also, right now I wanted to show, but I closed the page. So I wanted to show a bit about uh, what I was doing, my projects, little by little. just a second i'm sorry so when you open my instagram from beginning till the end you will see uh, what i was doing all this time so for example at the beginning before printer i use only molds from just from mass production all that i could find uh, then i made this uh, cake uh, and people were very interested in this. It was my first 3D printed cakes. After we made this geometry collection with small mold and uh, I made cakes for So Good magazine. And uh, uh, why also it was uh, very popular uh, because uh, you can imagine uh, that six years ago, uh, they were only, uh, only very simple molds. Like we can see on the picture, it's some Italian brand. Uh, so, for example, this red one, red donut, it was uh, the best design, you know, uh, like the most attractive. All other molds were very, very simple. And my molds with uh, sharp edges, they were very attractive and uh, quite new for people. Uh, and uh, that time also Instagram, it's like, uh, it's some separated part. We can talk about Instagram a lot, but I also became popular because of Instagram. And because when I started on the Instagram that time, it was, everything was totally different. For example, I remember when I posted this video, uh, after two, uh, after two hours, it was 500,000 uh, views. And uh, that time, uh, Instagram was very helpful. Uh, th there was no uh, like advertising. You didn't need to pay to buy something. So when you posted some interesting videos, usually you got a lot of attention, a lot of uh, followers. Like for example, here two million views. Also, Cherry was I think like nine million views or something like this. So. Uh, these pictures uh, and I just post it and make cakes and then uh, after all I also joined uh, some I found I, I attended class with Jordi Bordas and uh, this is my next uh, like information I, I want to tell about him this is very um, it's very interesting chef and uh, you can also join his page and he, is, um, he has his big concept uh, and he makes cakes uh, with uh, a lot of fruits, for example, but uh, with uh, uh, less sugar, 
less uh, fat, uh, more healthy. So he um, he tries to do very healthy cake, like healthy cakes, and uh, he's very popular right now. And uh, it's difficult to to join his classes because they are fully booked always. And we made uh, uh, with him uh, we made a cakes collection two years ago, but I didn't have time. <laughs> to finish videos and photos so we still didn't show it uh yes and uh, also we made a cake collection with um, uh with uh, Jose Margulius he's uh, american uh, he's uh, from brazil i think but he uh he lives in america and i met him last year when i was there in miami he has studio in miami we made uh, uh cakes you can see uh, also his page. He he make this um, interesting uh, composition. I don't know art, and uh, he wrote me like, uh, "Can we do something together? You have a very nice page. Like uh, it it would be good to do something." I said, "Okay, of course, why not?" And we uh, just uh, we made with him this collection. He uh, sent me. Uh, drawings and they make it uh, using chocolate and uh, oh, I closed the page uh, so I made it uh, using chocolate we just uh, stock chocolate together also with chocolate and then we also made very uh, similar cake from uh, for Land Rover Uh, and here we have 70 pieces. So 70, it was 70 like un anniversary of uh, Land Rover. And uh, they sent me uh, the file with design. Uh, and it's not just a car. It's, you know, uh, this is cars from the beginning till the end. Uh, they are designed. And we also made a video um, here. So how I uh, put them all together. And video is 15 seconds, but we made it three hours. <laughs> so it took me three hours to assemble this composition. Yeah, and it was project for Land Rover. And uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I can talk about Instagram a lot. Uh, Instagram gave me a lot of, a lot of followers and uh, it uh, made me popular and Many uh, very famous brand contacted me to do something for me. For example, uh, I had many emails to open something, some cafe, restaurants, uh, to make uh, expensive cake in Monaco or somewhere else. But uh, I'm mother, I have two kids and I can't travel uh, always. I have to be with my family. That's why I'm trying to do... Um, I'm. Uh, as uh, much as possible and we work with uh, for example this cake we made in collaboration with Ekaterina Lukasheva she's a origami artist so from time to time I do some collaboration sometimes I do something myself but unfortunately right now I work much more like a manager because we I opened this studio uh, we also made uh, beautiful videos uh, for uh, different cafe and uh, where was my presentation so I opened the studio I rented space in Kharkov uh, it was uh, very difficult to work in my small kitchen uh, and it was difficult to um, to do this step uh, but I did it so I rented space I made some renovation there I bought equipment and now uh, I teach there. I have classes. We make silicon molds uh, to sell. We sell silicon mold. You can see here we have many designs. So also I have here a box with a mold. I also made a design for box. Uh, and for this, I had to study Illustrator. <laughs> it was also difficult. It took me a lot of time. But I wanted to make it also myself. So we make uh, silicone molds for baking. And little by little I moved. I, uh, we started to sell, at the beginning we started to sell handmade molds from handmade silicone. Uh, then I found a factory in China. I was there twice and uh, I chose one uh, factory. And we, now we make their uh, silicone molds. 
I made first uh, uh, first few thousand. Now I ordered second uh, thousand. Like uh, I ordered again. Uh, we are going to grow. I want to sell more and more. And now it's like my business. So I have a studio. We make some experiment there. Uh, I have some stuff. Uh, we sell molds. I sell recipes. I teach and travel. And uh, I like to. Um, I like to. I want to keep it like a hobby. Uh, and it's all of this is interesting for me. And uh, now, of course, uh, my business is bigger and bigger. And it was hobby five years ago, but now it's a business. And I have to pay salary. I have to work. I have to pay for rent. So I need to move. And uh, now I work a lot like a manager. Uh, I have to, I don't know, I have to talk with some suppliers. I have to send somewhere. For example, I registered all trademarks all over the world. Uh, today I was talking with some European uh, guy who will help me to uh, send my molds from China to Europe. And there are a lot of questions, but uh, we are moving and it's uh, for me it's very interesting and i'm i'm proud a bit you know <laughs> just a bit but i'm proud that a lot of people all over the world they use my molds they know that i'm ukrainian uh, they uh, know that they know they uh, write me they uh, they buy uh, we sell molds to all all countries like europe united states canada australia africa china japan South Korea, everywhere, and uh, if I uh, go somewhere to teach, uh, there are a lot of my fans, and uh, I'm uh, sometimes uh, I think it's like a miracle, like I, it's just my dream, like it's impossible, but it's my life, and I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to uh, tell about my uh, my hobby, my pastry world, and uh, I hope uh, it was interesting for you. Bravo, Dinara. <laughs> Actually, спасибо <laughs> огромное. I think that uh, there are a lot of questions for you, and um, you can check the chat because people we are writing there. Uh, how how to do it? Как это сделать? Down below there is a chat, and uh, can так. you open it? Нет. Сейчас. Где он? Я вижу. Так, чат, еще запись. А где это вообще, где это должно быть? Внизу там есть строчечка. И, эм... Я вижу вот всех участников, вижу. Ну, я думаю, что если зачитывать не очень удобно. If... But we have some international participants also. I saw Alan here. And also I saw someone from Turkish, it seems to me. No, well, a lot of people. Okay, guys, I think you have questions and you can ask them now. Uh, are you ready? We'll yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I can't find chat. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about that. We will read it. Okay. Uh, Volodymyr, are you ready to ask? Yeah. Uh, good day, uh, Dinara. I want to thank you very much for your work and for your contribution uh, for design overall. For me, it's uh, the visible milestone of what uh, multidisciplinary design and uh, creativity can uh, can contribute to the worldwide practices, uh, to the uh, uh, industry zero dot. Uh, 4.0 uh, and uh, I am very 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 inspired and uh, astonished by your works and I have a question uh, do you uh, already uh, have some technology that uh, uh, can print uh, already uh, ready food material raw food materials into final forms not about molds but to print uh, a uh mm -hmm. re re ready uh, sell ready products yeah i understand 
So uh, me personally, I don't have any such printers or something else. We have only right now, uh, I have 3D printers and sometimes I use milling machine to cut chocolate or I don't know, some ingredients like you see on the picture, we used milling machine. But I know uh, there are some uh, printers that uh, can print with food as I uh, showed you before, you just can put inside puree. Also, uh, there are some printers, uh, there are a lot of enthusiasts who make uh, printer uh, which print with chocolate and even today I received some email from some company uh, the guy they want to do some collaboration or something like this with uh, chocolate uh, printers so they are going to uh, make a chocolate printing machine uh, but you know the problem is that usually uh, 3d printers uh, for food they print some terrible uh, a terrible 3d <laughs> because uh, the quality <laughs> yeah, is not it's not very good and uh, as i told you after 30 minutes printing it's cold so uh, it can be interesting uh, and there are some uh, for example i saw some um chocolate printing on one exhibition i think it's belgium or i, I don't know uh, exactly but their printing a printer prints with very high quality um it's like it's, it was amazing. So it was like some very like uh, beautiful object, but chocolate objects. And uh, unfortunately I don't have it, but you know, maybe because I don't need it. So if they <laughs> send me like a present, I can, I can use, but uh, for now I just, uh, I buy a printer that prints with uh, plastic. It's much just more useful for me. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I see the situation here. Uh, so uh, my intention was to, to know if there is something uh, uh, very, very super innovative tech in this uh, particular uh, niche of industry. And I think mm -hmm. I have my answer. Thank you. Thank you. And yes. again, absolutely, absolutely inspirational works. And uh, I'd like to even to, to, to be an ambassador <laughs> for your works. Uh, just because I think that uh, this is a good example of what creative industries and uh, innovations can bring into everyday life. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Also, I wanted to tell that I'm very open. If you have any ideas and you want to do something together, if you just have, if you think about something in your mind, uh, we can do because I have printer, I have ingredients, and uh, I really, uh, I've, I'm very passionate. So if I think about something new, for example, now we were, uh, I wanted to make some beautiful collection, but the guy who helped me, uh, maybe you know him, Andre. Um, Pavlov, he works with uh, he works not with 3D Max, but with uh, solid works with solid objects. Uh, and I'm waiting for them. He is finishing his last uh, project, and I want to do some interesting project. But mm, I need nice. uh, some 3D designers because now, unfortunately, I don't have time to make models, and I don't have enough skills. And you know, I understood when you do something, you have to choose what you can do because it's impossible to do everything. Uh, for example, here, uh, all that I showed, I think like 80% I made uh, by myself. For example, um, let's see. Я тут что-то начала типа писать на экране, когда вы Сейчас может escape? Нет. Ну, мы пока видим вкусный тортик. Мы не видим, да, что... я просто... У меня здесь, видите, типа рисование. А как это рисование убрать? Ну, мы это... пока не сможем. Это на вашем экране. А, это вот так, наверное, нужно. Нет. Оно сейчас... Вот. Только <laughs> я теперь нарисовала на экране. А, сейчас хотела показать. То есть это мой максимум, который я делала. So my maximum was... This 3D, uh, 3D model, I made it myself. Uh, it was inspiration from Versailles. Uh, uh, it was a topic. Cool. Uh, there were five chefs and we made big presentation in the Metropolitan uh, Museum in New York. 
and uh, I made this Versailles cake and I made this model, but it took me a lot of time. And uh, as I told you, for printer, you have to, um, you crazy have to join. Crazy. <laughs> crazy yes, you have to join everything. And then uh, it just, it was a big, uh, I don't it was a big It was a huge challenge for me because we had deadline, but we did it and uh, it was the cake so we printed uh, these parts we made silicon uh, molds and i just put inside uh, layers and we had this cake finally but it was like <laughs> very difficult especially because we worked in metropolitan uh, they didn't have enough uh, uh, materials and it was really difficult <laughs> But uh, so it's my maximum to make this model. It was my maximum. Yes. Thank you again. I think I already have a proposition for collaboration, but later. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, let's better leave this for a moment. And um, Dinara, could you name the main ingredients uh, maybe for, for this pastry, but the chocolate? Yes, we got that. The chocolate mm -hmm. maybe is one of the best. And what else? Uh, just a second. I would like to, how to achieve it. Achieve it. Yes. So um, ingredients, of course, we have cream. We have to whip the cream to make a mousse. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, it's a, uh, I didn't tell about this, but the recipe is very important for me. So when we make something, I have to do good recipe. So to put inside and uh, have good textures inside. So usually we have, of course, whipped cream. Uh, we uh, now you have to be not only a pastry chef and designer, you have to be chemist a bit uh, to understand how ingredients work together. For example, we use dextrose, inulin, uh, glucose syrup, um, trimaline, like we, we use a lot of different sugars, uh, a lot of different stabilizers, uh, a lot of different jelly agents uh, to make the cake stable. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I try to use a lot of fruits uh, and less sugar. So my cake's not very sweet and very fluffy. Always it's, uh, it's very necessary. And maybe one day we we can try them uh, you can try them because i don't have any shops now any mass production i don't sell cakes i only teach how to make cakes yeah thanks and guys some more questions можно вопрос да но на русском Uh, вот такой вопрос. Uh, я смотрю очень много форм, формообразований, которые сейчас uh, используются во многих, у многих художников. Скажем так, ну, например, uh, Юрий Мусатов, керамист, у него очень похожие, да, есть формообразования. Не в лоб в лоб, но uh, взять по всему миру. Uh, это как-то мешает или не мешает вот, uh, творчеству? Uh -huh. uh, мне на русском ответить или на английском? As you wish, но ну, давайте тогда уже на русском, наверное, если да. вопрос по-русски. Это мешает творчеству, поэтому я не смотрю ничего. Я стараюсь вообще, mm -hmm. ну вот, есть ребята, которые делают тоже там, после меня уже начали делать тоже там 3D-формы для тортов. Я специально на них не подписываюсь, чтобы меня просто это все не сбивало, и чтобы я делала вот, потому что очень часто такое бывает, что ты придумал, выложил, а потом оказалось, что кто-то это уже до тебя придумал. Первые разы, когда у меня бывали такие ситуации, меня там обвиняли в плагиате, бывало и такое, я и плакала, и спорила, там, и пыталась доказать свою правоту, но потом я поняла, что это на самом деле, когда уже выходишь, ну, вот на какие, ну, когда мы уже продаем и так далее, и так далее, это бизнес, это работа, и все друг у друга копируют. То есть... Невозможно сделать сейчас, учитывая, что мои формы еще очень простые, если мы не говорим про какие-то там ну, индивидуальные проекты большие, а вот такие просто мелкие формы, то есть, ну, если это ж, ты можешь использовать, грубо говоря, либо ровную ливнию, либо там какую-то закругленную, то есть шарик, ты его так составь или сяк составь, он все равно будет там что-то из шариков, поэтому э, очень многие тоже меня копируют, делают что-то похожее, например, мы сделали для Силикомарта 
для итальянской фирмы форму Cloud, и потом они все это уже, ну, это такая форма была из шариков крупных, которая как раз была на обложке, потом они сделали маленьким пирожным в кружочек, сложили там в полено, сделали так всяк, то есть там уже начались какие-то вариации на тему шариков, вот, но это уже как бы у нас еще такая есть штука, типа, кто первый показал, грубо говоря, в Инстаграме, тот и, тот и владелец идеи, поэтому э, нужно все показывать, но с другой стороны есть еще китайский мир плагиата, э, и вот ты можешь что-то показать, вот я в частности, если даже у меня бывало такое, что я в сторис выставляю, и через два месяца вы уже можете это купить на Алиэкспрессе. Поэтому для меня это большая проблема тоже для меня, как для бизнесмена, так сказать. Поэтому я как бы и пытаюсь выставлять, и мне все время стрёмно, потому что так как я эти продукты продаю многие, я хочу их как бы быть первым человеком, который их продаст. То есть, грубо говоря, их нужно сначала сделать, а потом уже показать. Но пока я жду, сделать же это долго, это год, допустим, нас занимает, вот там, ну, потому что фабрика, это все очень долго, пока оно приедет, мы там отфоткаем. Пока я жду, в итоге получается такое, такая ситуация была, например, у меня есть тарт, это было просто феерично, я сделала вот такой тарт, и они у меня полгода лежали, я их не выкладывала, потому что ну, я все ждала, что я там все доделаю, сразу закажу на фабрике. И потом я увидела, мне кто-то скинул ссылку, или я где-то увидела, с девочка сделала то же самое, вот один в один, у нее даже фотки похожи. И я поняла, что это ну, мне срочно нужно выкладывать, потому что если это выложу, грубо говоря, через неделю, то уже скажут, что я сплагиатила. Если это выложу в этот же день, то как бы ко мне претензий будет меньше. Вот, в итоге были там разбирательства в Инстаграме, и такое часто бывает, но я уже отношусь к этому очень спокойно потому что очень много людей с похожими идеями, и э, нельзя сказать, что эта идея только моя, и ничья больше. Ну, ну, как-то вот я пока живу так. Я всегда стараюсь делать что-то новое, то, что нравится мне, и не смотреть на то, что кто-то что-то делает похоже. Спасибо за ответ. Очень классно, на самом деле. Вдохновляет. Вот. У меня сейчас телефон разрядится, поэтому большое спасибо вам. Да, и вам спасибо. За лекции. Все, счастливо. Все, да, удачи. Окей, okay, some more questions to Dinara. Окей, okay, Dinara, I have a question for you, maybe. If, oh, Maria, окей, okay, окей. Okay. Dinara, здравствуйте, спасибо да, за такую прекрасную, вдохновляющую э, презентацию безумно красивые формы, все так стильно, настоящее произведение искусства, и мне кажется, есть такой момент, что это есть, ну, просто невозможно, это жалко, как это можно есть. Привет из Харькова, ну, я сейчас не в Харькове, но живу в Харькове, и где можно вообще увидеть вживую ваше произведение, как-то, может, познакомиться и пообщаться? Ну вот у меня, меня, да, да, я как уже говорила, у меня кафе нет, ресторана, ну там никакого кондитерской нет, мы продаем только формы, и очень много ребят делают просто в моих формах там на заказ торты или кондитерские, мы ну, поставляем также в кондитерские, а так, в принципе, у нас студия на Алексеевке в Харькове, мы проводим там курсы периодические, карантин просто нас подписал, вот, и иногда бывают, мне люди пишут и могут просто зайти там познакомиться, посмотреть, что мы делаем, вот, и я еще, кстати, забыла, хотела сказать, это просто самая важная вообще вещь в моем выступлении была, вот, я это не произнесла, что э, вот эти штуки, которые я делаю для меня, э, изначально, когда я только начинала, было очень интересно делать их на вид, чтобы они не были похожи на торты, то есть это была прям такая идея, что когда ты это видишь, ты ну, никогда в жизни не подумаешь, что это вообще что-то съедобное, что это торт, и уже когда ты его разрезаешь, и там внутри а, там, какие-то слои, и это съедобное, вот, это была такая одна из, одна из вообще идей, которых, которые мною двигали, и мне бывает иногда ставили это в укор, типа вот это несъедобно, это там еще как-то типа не хочется такое кушать или страшно резать, а, вот, или там некоторые вот как вы говорят, что жалко это резать, но 
я считаю, что на самом деле кондитерский мир, он очень разный, очень, ну, еда, как бы люди ели и будут есть, ну, иначе они не выживут, и торты будут, и все это будет, вот, и на каждого покупателя есть свое изделие, есть разные поводы, и можно пробовать разное, и я в своих рецептах еще, это тоже важно, я стараюсь всегда делать чтобы это было не только красиво, но и вкусно, естественно, и максимально безвредно. То есть это не килограммы масла там, и сахара, а это максимально там, большое количество фруктов, ягод, только лучше шоколад, только лучшие сливки, там, мука, миндальная мука, ореховая. Вот. И это действительно, ну, действительно вкусно. То есть почему я, в принципе, стала шефом? Потому что я люблю есть сладости. Вообще, я просто сладкоежка. Я начала их печь сама, было так вкусно, и так постепенно-постепенно в итоге стала, стала делать формы. Нужно открывать кафе хотя бы в Харькове. Ну, в Харькове это отдельная такая тоже тема для разговора. Мне кажется, что это будет неприбыльно. То есть мне нужно будет очень сильно вложиться финансово и морально. И э, продукты по факту себестоимость их, например, что здесь, что в Европе одинаковая, а сколько я смогу с этого заработать и, и когда это вообще отбить и окупить. Э, в Киеве, мне кажется, такая бы история пошла. В Харькове может быть, но как бы большие вопросы, плюс у меня, я буквально перед кризисом хотела там оформлять себе франшизу, лицензию, очень много запросов со всего мира, у нас уже есть заведения, где продаются мои пирожные в Москве и в Бостоне, я там бренд-шеф, а в Катаре есть, я, кстати, об этом даже не сказала, в Катаре есть заведение Динара Косько Пейстри Арт, то есть они там прям сделали, сейчас вам покажу, они выкупили мое имя. Так, сейчас где-то было у меня. Они выкупили мое имя, и я им поставляю туда все формы, обучаю персонал, и они продают... Вот, не найду, наверное, сейчас где-то было на картах. Они продают мои пирожные, то есть вот у них витрины. Они сделали дизайн. Ну, про дизайн мы умолчим. Делали его без меня. Вот. Но они продают прям, вот там у них такая упаковка, такое все агрессивное, но опять-таки это их там уже какая-то история. Вот. Еще у меня есть обращение, ну, из разных стран, там Саудовская Аравия и, и еще разные-разные страны, поэтому я надеюсь, что когда мы выйдем из этого кризиса, будем двигаться дальше и как-то расширяться. Может быть, когда-то и в Харькове наступит этот момент, когда я буду готова. Удачи вам. Да, спасибо. Окей, okay. it's a pity we don't speak English, <laughs> because our partners they won't understand us. Yeah, I can uh, tell also in English. <laughs> yeah, you can briefly say this idea that uh, you yeah. wish to to say the main idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I told that I I told that. Uh, When I started to make these molds and cakes in general, for me, it was very important to do something uh, unusual outside and tasty inside. And uh, when people uh, usually saw my, uh, see my cakes for the first time, they can't understand what is it. Uh, it's some, I don't know, design object, some ways or something else. Uh, but when you cut it, you see layers inside and it's, uh, it's really, uh, really cake. And for me, it was one of the main idea to do something to surprise people and to do something with uh, interesting appearance, attractive appearance and uh, edible insight. Um, to do some like design objects, edible design objects, because, uh, you know, I'm not a professional pastry chef. So I studied, I attended more than 20 classes. I went to France, Spain, Russia, Ukraine. I saw many different chefs, champions, uh, many classes. I worked a lot at home, but I don't have, you know, like big diploma. I didn't uh, finish, like I didn't graduate it in some special uh, university, for example. Uh, so I'm an architect and I try to combine and uh, I try to not lose this uh, architectural skills. So I still working with 3D modeling And I'm trying to do like small design objects, but edible design objects and uh, to spread this uh, beautiful pastry around the world. And also the other uh, 
the other part uh, when people buy my mold when they work with my mold you don't need to add any additional decoration so you don't need to decorate to put something on the top because the cake it's uh, already like uh, some it has some design so you don't need to add anything else for example here this apple or here or i don't know everywhere so it's like some design object and um, what else i was talking about also about pastry uh, cafe i have one uh, i am a brand chef in moscow and uh, in boston there are cafes in moscow and boston and also uh, there is a big restaurant big cafe in uh, qatar it's a pastry museum uh, dinar cosco pastry art they bought uh, my my uh, trademark my name uh, and i know the investor i was there twice uh, they use only my molds uh, only my recipes uh, my uh, technologies and uh, i teach them i uh, go there from time to time they unfortunately they opened before quarantine one week before quarantine only and uh, it's difficult for business, uh, but they have very big uh, cafe with museum. And the idea was to make uh, like cake museum. They have two separated spaces. Uh, the first space is like jewelry shop. So when you come here, uh, you see inside like boxes with lightning. It's like, it seems like there are Rolex inside, but there are cakes. And they also have cafe when, where you can uh, buy something and eat, sit and eat. Uh, and uh, Maria asked me where it uh, where it's possible to buy my cakes in Ukraine, but unfortunately uh, nowhere. So I don't have any pastry shop. I sell only molds. Uh, there was some company they wanted to open uh, to uh, have my cakes in Kiev uh, in the city center, and I met them. I met uh, before quarantine, maybe two or three weeks. And we uh, we wanted to do it. We started. Uh, we are uh, we were talking about uh, concept, uh, what kind of molds and cakes, and we were expecting this. But uh, suddenly quarantine, and now everything is we postponed everything. So maybe in future it will be possible. Yeah, we are living in the great times. <laughs> yes. Um. And Dinara, I also have maybe the conclusion question, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it's obvious, very beautiful, and uh, I think that, uh, well, it's not a popular idea, but for me, this food is uh, healthy food, because I'm not afraid of sugar. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and I like this, and I also eat cakes mostly, most of the time. Uh, but I would like to ask you, what is the main message to the world of uh, this art? Uh, what do you um, want to change? Uh, maybe the attitude to the food or something like that, or um, our acceptance of, of this uh, pastry world? Uh, so, okay. You know, when I started, I didn't have any messages. I just made uh, what I like. It just it was funny for me so i thought okay maybe we to do such cake or this design or that why not because we do not have something similar and after when i started uh, traveling and when i meet people uh, now um, i am big inspiration for people it's also a surprise for me many people write me like i changed my career i uh, i don't know i started baking or something like this and uh, I like to inspire people to show that you can, to show that everything is possible and especially that food can be beautiful and can be interesting and more than just ordinary cake. And uh, it's just some part of our food culture and uh, we also can uh, use it. So um, uh, how to say... Um, I, I, I want to make it more beautiful, more attractive and to pay people's attention on the pastry world maybe and just to add something new to pastry world because, you know, we will eat honey cake and crepes and Napoleon cake in any case because it's our traditional and it's tasty. But these cakes, they also can be and they can be beautiful, especially, for example, this cake, uh, origami cake, it's... Uh, 
it's very tasty. There are seven layers inside caramel apple. Uh, it's very thin layer of uh, chocolate spraying, and uh, it also can be your experience. So we can taste and we can eat different uh, because such mousse cakes in Europe, in, especially in France, they are very traditional, but in Ukraine, they are not traditional at all. And many people, they don't know what is mousse cake. And if you go to, for example, who knows, Kulinichi in uh, Kharkov, we have some like, um, like pastry shop, some cafe, uh, and you buy some mousse cakes, usually it's like 70% that you buy, you eat uh, terrible cakes. It's very rare when you can come to ordinary uh, supermarket and buy normal mousse cakes. Usually they are terrible and you eat it and you think that it's, uh, oh my God, I don't want to eat it. It's like, uh, it's untasty, it's strange. So it's better honey cake, but it's not. So you have to, if you want to taste something, maybe you have to find some good pastry chef, maybe some housewife who work with mousse cakes, but, uh, but it's like uh, it's also how to say в общем это такая обратная сторона медали что очень часто люди покупают в магазинах очень плохого качества разочаровываются и потом больше даже не хотят это пробовать но мы вот как бы я распространяю популяризирую мусовые торты грубо говоря вот ну и дизайн соответственно и пытаюсь показать что все может быть гораздо интереснее сложнее и Uh, как я уже сказала, используя причем эти формы, вам не нужно заморачиваться на тему декора, украшать листиками, цветочками. То есть я отчасти еще облегчаю uh, жизнь нашим uh, кондитерам. Вплоть до того, что мы приехали недавно uh, в Египет uh, на отдых в отель, uh, спустились на ужин, а там стоят uh, на вот этом шведском столе, где десерты, и там торт стоит тоже из моей формы. То есть uh, uh, вот, то есть они постепенно распространяются. Ну, это, я думаю, очень приятная заметка приехать в отель в другом конце мира и увидеть... Вы знаете, самая приятная заметка для меня, это я на русском расскажу, это прям самое такое для меня ну, вот такое событие было. Мы были в, Шан... в Шинжене, как раз ездили на фабрику, смотрели, там после какой-то выставки, что-то такое, и были с мужем в каком-то там отеле, где-то в Шинжене, непонятно где вообще, и я открыла Facebook, который редко проверяю, и там сообщение от э, э, Жуков, который вот солист «Руки вверх», не помню, как зовут, Сергей Жуков, да? Вот, солист группы «Руки вверх», а у него кондитерская в России, и он хотел там поговорить, что-то обсудить, и вот он позвонил, и я говорила с самим солистом группы «Руки вверх», то есть для меня это было просто до небес дотронуться, ну, то есть если бы, когда мне было 10 лет, мне бы кто-то сказал, что мне позвонит сам солист этой группы и будет со мной разговаривать, и говорит, что ему очень нравятся мои торты, я бы, наверное, никогда в жизни бы не поверила, вот, то есть... Э... Встретились два фаната друг друга, да? Ну, это просто, это было, ну, как-то, ну, это очень странно. Вот, то есть для меня это был прям такой, знаете, как это, наверное, одно из самых запоминающихся в моей жизни. Или когда мне тоже там пишут, что какие-нибудь там наши местные украинские звезды хотят попробовать что-то там передать там им, вот, такое тоже бывает. То есть это, безусловно, радует, что люди вообще интересуются. Вот, и что нравится то, что я делаю, потому что по факту я делаю все для людей, для публики, не для себя. Для себя я бы просто лежала на диване. То есть мне обязательно нужен фидбэк, я уже запомнила. Вот а, это прям вообще без позитивного фидбэка мне плохо работает. Да, это, это мы вас очень хорошо понимаем, как дизайнеры, как люди творчества, безусловно. Динара, ну это потрясающая лекция, очень красиво, теперь все хотят есть, однозначно. Так, нам что-то еще пишут, секундочку, в чат, боюсь пропустить. Задают много вопросов о том, где вас найти и как с вами связаться. Смотрите, у меня, да, ребят, если вот реально у вас есть какие-то идеи по поводу дизайна, вообще можно все сделать, главное мне время найти, у нас сейчас няни нет, но это прям можно удивлять. Я делаю, например, проекты. Сейчас вам покажу быстренько. Это мы делали видео для Дита. 
можете у меня посмотреть, это бренд, который делает очки. И э, мы делали, то есть они мне прислали вот такую штуку, типа у нас будут очки, вот такой листик, типа идея. И мы в итоге, я сделала просто такую композицию, это я сама делала в Максе, вот, напечатала, и все это сделала из шоколада. Это было супер сложно, у меня просто были побиты пальцы, там, от плоскогуб, ну, в общем, это долго рассказывать, как я тут писала, как я это все делала, а, вот. И мы сделали такую шоколадную композицию, то есть можно делать, я на самом деле очень хотела бы поделать какие-то не просто пирожные там, или торты, а вот какие-то именно интересные такие глобальные композиции, потому что они мне приносят гораздо больше вообще какой-то радости, интереса. И, ну, в общем, у меня не все состоит в коммерции, поэтому здесь есть мой сайт, есть мой имейл, вот, просто можно написать Динара Косяков в поиске, там все будет. Вот. Ну, единственное, нужны какие-то, ну, потому что мне иногда пишут, типа, я студент, э, в, э, писали мне там, допустим, я студент где-то там в Индии, э, а давайте сделаем коллаборейшн, я вот знаю все про индийскую еду, там, или, ну, там, или кто-то хотел сделать торт в виде облучения, там, как рак мозга, там, рас... ну, в общем, какие-то должны быть идеи съедобные. Друзья, будьте аккуратны с идеями, не все идеи, поэтому... Да, но это, в общем, это очень тоже, я, короче, очень открыта. Чтобы не испортить аппетит, да, давайте. Все позитивные идеи. Ну, Динара, мы вам желаем огромных творческих успехов. Да, спасибо. И пусть в Украине, Украина будет той страной, которая будет продвигать традицию очень красивой еды, эксклюзивной еды, чтобы у нас хватало на это и вдохновения, и возможностей финансовых, и, и настроения, ну и, естественно, и площадей, и технологий, чтобы мы в этом развивались, и вы, в частности, тоже как амбассадор украинский. Да, я еще хотела сказать тоже в самом конце спасибо, ребят, что смотрели, слушали, надеюсь, вам было интересно in English, so thank you for your attention, thank you that you you hear me during one hour it's, uh, it's how to say um in общем i'm happy about this and uh, uh, I always i tell that you have to work hard work a lot and do that you like to do and uh, try to do something uh something new or something very good so if you want to be popular and uh, I don't know uh, if you want to do some good objects like if just if you want to be popular it's impossible to do something uh, um, I don't know something simple and uh, um, может быть я рано на русском скажу я хочу сказать что если вы хотите именно популярным быть но вот не просто там делать что-то для себя а именно достичь какой-то популярности, выстрелить, по моему мнению, нужно делать либо какие-то новые интересные объекты, которые будут каким-то образом цеплять, именно цеплять людей, либо делать что-то очень хорошо, и вы ну, выйдете на качестве, то есть есть два пути, или-или. Если делать низкое качество и просто то же, что делают другие, то, по моему мнению, ну или нужно быть очень классным бизнесменом, вот, то есть нужно сочетать все вот эти функции, много работать, не сдаваться, и самое важное, наверное, делать то, что тебе нравится, то есть это прям, тогда ты будешь делать без конца и не будешь уставать. Это прям правило удачной работы. So you have two variants, or to be extremely innovative, or extremely qualitative, yeah? To give high quality of your product. Yes. Something like that. <laughs> Динара, спасибо огромное. Да, и вам спасибо. Да, и я надеюсь, что мы еще и в этом проекте свяжемся и будем контактировать. И, естественно, наш квал будет вопросов, но вы да. уж как-то выдержите. Угу. Хорошо. <laughs> спасибо а, большое. Всего, да, Всем спасибо. до встречи, до скорого. Угу. Увидимся завтра с вами. Всего, да, до свидания. Я нашла чат. Да, вот теперь почитайте его, почитайте.